What's up everyone? It's Cardi C, the baseball card collector. I uh, figured I would take a quick break from binge watching Band of Brothers and submit this contest response video. Ray from Philly has a great YouTube channel. He's celebrating his 1000th subscriber by um, putting this contest out. Winner gets a $50 PayPal uh, transfer. So he's asking his subscribers to list the best baseball players of all time by position. So did a little bit of research, went through uh, the record books to see who should be considered where, um, and I'm excited to share what I found with you guys. So first off the bat, we got an absolute no-brainer, Babe Ruth, the great Bambino, the Sultan of Swat out in right field. He is the greatest baseball player of all time. 714 career home runs first player to hit 50 and 60 home runs in a year seven time world series champion 1923 mvp winner absolute no doubter um it it sucks for ty cobb and hank aaron that they're playing right field the position that babe ruth played but uh maybe if we were picking up bench spots those guys would be considered as a pinch hitter but babe ruth starting off the list right field next up we have center field and the say hey kid willie mays hit over 300 10 times in his career with a career 302 average led the league in home runs four times finishing his career with 660 two-time nl mvp in 1954 and 1965 showing that he played at an elite level for uh, over a decade, his 1954 MVP campaign, he hit 345, 13 triples, 41 home runs, and 110 RBIs. We all know the catch, considered the greatest defensive play ever. Willie Mays, say hey kid, gets the spot at center field. Other players I considered here, Mickey Mantle, Joe DiMaggio, Ken Griffey Jr., uh, but... For everything I mentioned before, that's why Mays gets the nod. So left field was probably the most, um, the closest position, and that's because Barry Bonds uh, is an absolute behemoth. Um, but Ted Williams, after I did a little bit of research, really deserves to to be this this selection, be in this spot. The kid, splendid splinter, best all-around player in baseball history. He's the epitome of a five-tool player, six-time batting title winner, a career on-base percentage of 482, which is the best of all time, 521 home runs, lifetime batting average of 344, and he's the last player to hit above 400 when he hit 406 in 1941. Oh, did I mention that he missed five seasons in the prime of his career due to military service? Yeah, he could have hit 700 home runs easily if it wasn't for World War II. Other players that were considered here, Barry Bonds, Ricky Henderson, Carl Skremski, but Ted Williams, our starting left fielder. Now we're going to move into the infield, and at catcher, we got Pudge, Yvonne Rodriguez, 14-time All-Star, 13-time gold, gold Glove winner, which is both more than any other catcher in history. He was beyond durable behind the plate. He caught 2,427 games, which this day and age, you're lucky to, to be catching into your 30s. His 1999 MVP season, he hit 332, 35 home runs, 113 RBIs, 116 runs. Oh, and on top of all that average and power, he stole 25 bases. He finished his career with a 296 career average, 311 home runs. Other catchers that got some consideration here were Johnny Bench, Yogi Berra, Carlton Fisk, but because of the durability and the prowess that Pud showed behind the plate, he gets he gets the nod into the list today. 
So next up we have first base, Lou Gehrig, the Iron Horse. <clears throat> it wasn't until I started doing some research for this list that I realized how durable Lou Gehrig was. Um, everyone knows about Lou Gehrig disease and ALS at the end of his career, but before that, he was really the original Iron Man, setting the previous record for consecutive games played at 2,130 games. Uh, he backed up Babe Ruth in the Yankees lineup in the, the 20s and 30s, which helped score well, which helped him score over 100 runs and drive in over 100 runs for 14 straight years. He set the single season RBI record with 185 in 1931. He won the 1934 Triple Crown with a 363 average, 49 home runs, and 166 RBIs. Uh, Lou Gehrig, the Iron Horse, gets our first base spot. Other players that were considered here, Albert Pujols, Miguel Cabrera, Willie McCovey, Jeff Bagwell, Frank Thomas. Next up, we got our second baseman, Jackie Robinson. Um, if we're looking just at statistics, Rogers Hornsby would probably get the start. Um, maybe Joe Morgan, but you can't look at everything in a vacuum. Jackie Robinson integrated the modern uh, major league and broke the baseball car color barrier. But on top of that, he was a phenomenal baseball player. When he made it into the, the major leagues, he hit... 311 and 10 MLB seasons, where he was named to six All Star teams. He was uh, he won the 1949 NL MVP, where he hit 342 with 37 steals and 124 RBIs. And those accolades aren't even taking into account his his Negro League statistics. So Jackie Robinson gets the spot at second base. At shortstop, how could I make a, a video without? including Mr. T206 himself. Honus Wagner, also known as the Flying Dutchman, was undoubtedly the best hitter of the dead ball era. In 21 seasons, he had 3,430 hits, posted a 329 average with 722 stolen bases. He was one of the first five members of the inaugural Hall of Fame class with Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth, Christy Mathewson, and Walter Johnson. Uh, a couple of the other players I considered here, Derek Jeter and Cal Ripken Jr. Now this next one pains me as a Red Sox fan, but I felt like I needed to do it. Alex Rodriguez, A-Rod. Say what you will about his steroid usage, but looking at A-Rod's career, it's clear that he was one of the most dominant third basemen slash shortstops of all time. The stats just don't lie. Over 3,000 hits, 696 home runs, lifetime batting average of 295, 14-time All-Star, 3-time AL MVP, 10-time Silver Slugger Award winner, 5-time home run leader. Uh, and something I didn't know was he is the career record holder for Grand Slams with 25. Uh, Clutch King, A-Rod, gets the nod at third. Other players I thought about putting in here, uh, Mike Schmidt, George Brett, Mel Ott, and Eddie Matthews. So that's our, our starting lineup. Now for the pitchers, we're going to be looking at two starters and two relievers. Um, right-handed pitchers and left-handed pitchers so our first pitcher the professor Greg Maddox uh, he won 15 games in 17 straight seasons on route to a 355 career victory total that's the second highest win total since the dead ball era he's the only hurler with 300 wins 3,000 strikeouts and less than a thousand walks he had four straight Cy Young Awards starting in 1992 <clears throat> when he posted a 20-11 and 11 record with a 2.18 ERA, a record that went unchallenged until someone we'll talk about soon had tied it. In 23 MLB seasons, 
He only spent 15 days on the disabled list, known for his preparation uh, before games. Just absolutely dominant, Greg Maddox. A couple other starters that I considered for this spot, Cy Young, Roger Clemens, Walter Johnson, and of course my boy, Pedro Martinez. So then next up we have Mariano Rivera, Mo or the Sandman. He's going to be a surefire 2019 first ballot Hall of Famer, 13-time All-Star, 5-time World Series champion, MLB career leader in saves with 652, winner of 5 AL Rollades Relief Man Awards, finished in uh, top 3 in Cy Young voting 4 times, which is absolutely insane for a reliever, but that's how good Mariano Rivera was. People still have nightmares about that cutter, but he deserves the nod for our right-handed closer or right-handed reliever. Other players that got some consideration for this spot, Raleigh Fingers, Trevor Hoffman, Goose Gossage, Joe Nathan. So then we move on to our lefty pitchers. First up, we got the big unit, Randy Johnson, five-time Cy Young Award winner, including four consecutive from 1999 to 2002, which tied Maddox's record. He led the league in strikeouts nine times and posted six 300 strikeout seasons, ranked second on the all-time strikeout list, and won three games in the 2001 World Series for the Diamondbacks. Um, as a Red Sox fan, hugely grateful for that because that meant the Yankees couldn't win another one, but big unit gets the start for uh, left-handed pitchers. Other players considered here, Sandy Koufax, Steve Har Carlton, uh, and Warren Spahn. So our last spot is a left-handed reliever, Aroldis Chapman. Now before you start judging me, I was trying to go through uh, left-handed relievers and, and see who I could put in above Chapman, and there really wasn't a lot there really weren't a lot of left-handed closers. Uh, you see a lot of right-handed closers, Gagne, Papelbon, Francisco Rodriguez, all right-handed pitchers. So there was only a couple, and that's why Chapman made it to into the lefty spot. But when you think about Chapman, the first thing you think about is just total dominance. Off-field issues aside, the man has been part of five all-star teams and was one of the main reasons the Cubs won the World Series back in 2016. He's the fastest pitcher to 500 strikeouts and has thrown the fastest recorded pitch in MLB history at 105.1 miles per hour. He'll need to continue this type of dominance to make it to Cooperstown, but with a remarkably light list of left-handed relief pitchers, Chapman makes the cut. Other players I considered here uh, was really just Billy Wagner. But that is my list. Thanks for tuning in, uh, and congratulations, Ray from Philly, on 1,000 subscribers. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe.